This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook. I have my new best friend, John Gucci Foley. He is, and talk about, I'm glad to be here. He's not only glad to be here, but he's with the Glad to Be Here Foundation, which is just minimal because he is a former solo pilot of my favorite air group, not air as in music, but the Blue Angels. I'm originally from Ohio. Anybody from Dayton, Ohio knows the Blue Angels the most extraordinary example of focus that I can think of, but also CEO of CenterPoint, uh, speaks around the world, obviously an inspirational, aspirational, and educational speaker. I am so delighted to have you on, John. Thanks for joining me on The Playbook. Dave, I'm glad to be here. Man, this is deep. In fact, I've been waiting for this for weeks since you and I connected. I know. what you meet, We were talking earlier about the 1% of the 1%. There's certain people that are on the exact same frequency. It's not just like a channel of your frequency. You and I are on the exact same frequency. Uh, we explain things in different variant ways, but we believe in the same things. There's a core unification or oneness uh, for whatever reason that has been developed through our careers and our lives and our personal lives. Where do you think that frequency comes from uh, that allows us to feel not only at one with each other, but we yeah. were talking about being at one with your Blue Angel team, 18 yes. inches apart at Mach 1 or 2 or whatever the heck you can do. Where does the oneness, that ability to feel the oneness come from? I think it's simple, Dave. It's, it's a purpose larger than self. You know, we're connected to something much larger than ourselves. I can feel it in you. We both want to inspire a billion people, right? That's kind over, of cool. Over a billion. Over, thank you. Yeah, so John, John and I will inspire, empower over <laughs> 2 billion people together. <laughs> we will, absolutely. And part of that, I think, is, you know, I think back to my time in the blues. You know, you mentioned that, right? How do we fly 18 inches apart? You know, and, and, and even for people watching right now, you know, stick out your arm and, and try to touch that screen. Yeah, right there is a 22-ton jet going 400 knots, right? Sometimes upside down. So, so how do you do that? It, it creates a oneness of your mind, body, and spirit. Everything has to come together. The, the game plan, as you, you like to call it, you have to have a game plan. You have to practice. You have to focus. But when you're, when you're in that moment, it's something different. You're operating at that frequency that you're talking about where it's, it's above conscious thought. It's beyond conscious thought. And, you know, I have practiced intuition. One of my mentors, a guy named Bob Proctor, gave me a great exercise because yeah. I fly in planes a lot as a passenger. Yeah. And uh, I've only flown a plane once in Africa. It was an amazing experience. Not very fast. It was an antique plane, but it was extraordinary. But I learned to stare at the seats in front of me on an airplane and learn through my intuition to get the person to turn around and look through the slot at me. And, and you know, I'm on airplanes all the time, but this is a muscle. Um, and it's a, it's a higher frequency intuition. And we were discussing earlier, there's no physical way for a human being. If you were at a conscious level, at, at a normal conscious level, there's no way you could fly upside down, you know, at 400 miles an hour, whatever speed it would be, 18 inches, an arm length away from, you know, all that tonnage of, of steel, if you weren't operating in what I call an intuitive level at a high, higher frequency, were there some drills or practice? You know, I love my uh, in airplane practice, but are there some other things that I can do to build that muscle of intuition? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I start with gratitude. I believe if you can build the gratitude in your own mind, it'll enhance that intuition. So I start every morning with what I call my glad to be here wake up. And I've trained my brain, right, to wake up happy. And it's very simple. You can do this in seven seconds if you want. First thing I did this morning when I woke up was, first off, I said, you know, I'm in Sun Valley. I'm with my wife. I'm not traveling right now. I'm going, this is great. I'm just grateful to be here. And then you popped in my mind. I said, you know, I'm going to get the rare privilege to be a day show and, and more importantly for our audience to, you know, impact other people's lives. So by playing that tape, training your brain on gratitude. Uh, and then I also, when, up my, when I get out of bed, I hit my left foot forward first to trigger right, Dave, it's a trigger where the minute my left foot hits the floor, I say two things. Number one, I'm grateful. It's going to be a magical day. It's not normal. And what am I looking forward to in the day? And again, it was the, it was the, the, the event I just did and your call right now. Those are the two things. That, you know, those will help you. You know, it's interesting. The most successful, highly functional, self-actualizing, positive, happy people, healthy people, that I know because happy people are healthy. They don't get sick. They don't attack other people. Um, the most extraordinary thing to me is 
you know, one of my glad to be there routines is just simply to say thank you before I go to bed and when I wake up. It takes 0.1 seconds. And I've been surrounded, especially in the last two decades, by people like you, Hall of Famers, extraordinary people, and thought leaders, right? Deepak Chopra, Bob Proctor, I mentioned, Brian Tracy, uh, Sharon Lecter, Mary Morrissey, and the list goes on and on, right? The world thought leaders, the transformational leaders, uh, and every single one of them, you know, as complex as the materials and the books that they've written like yours, complex as their careers are and the intricacies and the dependent and independent variables. When I ask them these certain questions, they all go right back to gratitude, right? Wow. And meanwhile, I've studied physics, quantum physics, and metaphysics. I am yeah. sure you have quite a science background as well. And everyone that has scientifically, theoretically, spiritually, everybody agrees the power of gratitude. Yeah. But yet, with all of that credibility, right? Unlike a Bible where you can argue, Right? There, there is no argument against gratitude. You can't tell me one place that gratitude doesn't make something better. Right? It absolutely does. So regardless of all this, and there, there's millions of hours of content on the internet. I, every book, I just have to say this. Why is it that despite all of these things, that half the people watching this by tonight won't say thank you? By the next morning, another half won't say thank you. And within three days, almost everyone that's watching this video, with my credibility, your credibility, and all the people we've learned from and we've associated with at the highest level on earth and all the books that we've read, within three days, almost everyone won't say thank you. Tell me, John, this is my biggest quagmire on earth. And if we can solve it, why is it true that that, that happens? Well, okay, first off, we are going to change that because my belief is the world's coming from us, not at us. And now that is power. That's freedom. All right. So right now we're going to change that because what, what you just articulated, I know is, is proven. They've done the research and all that kind of stuff. Right. I think that's a limiting belief. I don't buy into that. Okay. I'm like, yeah, okay, Dave, I, I get it. That's what the research says, but we're going to change it. We're going to change it today. We're going to change it right now. So, so, you know, how are we going to do that? Well, one, first off, we just need to be the beacon of light, right? We need to be the example. And I know you're doing that and I'm trying to do that. Uh, but here's the really key is you get people just to try it and they feel it. Cause you and I both know it's not about here. I can't explain. I don't want to explain something here. I want to get it here and gratitude and thankfulness. When you just try it, you feel it. It's like working out. You start to work out and you start to feel good and, and you keep doing it. But here's the other thing too, you know, now if you want some facts, so Einstein, you remember this quote about Einstein? You know, he said, if your prayer is thank you, that's enough. You know, right there. I mean, and, and look at, you're the, you and Einstein. You probably reincarnated from Einstein, okay? Because uh, <laughs> that's, oh, you got him? Oh, look at that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. But uh, again, see, we're on the same frequency, right? But the, uh, so I think we ought to do this for people is just number one, um, very quickly. So I found this out later in some of my research, you know, I, in the blue angels, no one taught you this. Okay. N n the things that you and I are talking about, it wasn't consciously taught, but we did it. We did it through a team of experiential learning. We would visualize before we went flying. You get the brief. Everyone comes together. And we, the boss, and I've got video of this. I can share it with you. He, he starts to talk about the maneuvers in the exact tone and the exact inflection. So it's like, up we go. And on the G of go, he's putting the back stick in, right? And I'm visualizing this. I'm, I'm closing my eyes. I'm moving. We go through the whole routine. That allows us to then operate and perform at a super high level because I've already done it through the visualization process. I suggest thankfulness and gratitude is part of a visualization process. So if we can get people to start doing this, and, and they will, right, um, then you will start to change the, the neuroplasticity and your brain changes. Well, and you know, the idea of glad to be here is in effectuating that idea, right? You cannot be glad to be here unless you're great, you're grateful. Right. And so you're actually forcing people to visualize that gratitude. Um, it's so it's so interesting um, because you talk about things come from you. I always say things come through me. Which right. Means, right. That comes from me. But, you know, there's a great source that's coming through me for others. It allows me from me, including the idea of projecting. 
uh, things come from me. People think our eyes are receiving. I think they're projecting. And, nice. and so that's why it's so important to visualize what I want because I materialize what I want. I have two sayings. One, that everything that is in my life right now, I, I intended it to be here, uh, which with gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability is perfectly beautiful. And then two, not only did I intend everything that is in my life to be here, but I give meaning to it. I'm yeah. the one that gives meaning to it. Um, and I think through your experiential uh, journey that you've intended some very interesting things, but what meaning have you given all of the great things that you're doing and that you have done? Yeah, so the deepest meaning is to be an inspiration for others, okay? And to be part of something larger than myself. We kind of started that way, right? Um, so I wanted and still do want to be surrounded by people like you that are, are have a bigger purpose in life, right? So the meaning is I, I really boil it down to three things. Learn, grow, give. That's my mantra now. Learn, grow, give. So every day, if I'm learning, like right now with you and I, you're, t you're teaching me, I'm learning like crazy. Hopefully I'm growing as a human being and I'm giving it now. So the, I love the through, through you, right? Because it's just, it meant to go through us. Um, and, and I do have a mantra, by the way, Dave. So um, let, let's try this real quick, you and I. So your I am statement. I don't know, do you have an I am statement? Oh yeah, I have several. Cool. I have several. I am happy, so. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you mine real quick. You know, uh, I say I am an angel. And the reason I picked that word was, okay, yeah, there's some correlation to I was a blue angel, but that's not why I picked it, right? The, the reason is I was doing some research about angels. Actually, I was doing wisdom. I, I'm, I'm always trying to gain wisdom, right? And it turns out an angel has five qualities. An angel is a messenger. An angel gives guidance. An angel protects. An angel is a warrior. And above all else, an angel serves others. And I said, Dave, when I read this, I said, you know, I don't really know if those are the, the true five qualities, but if they are, I'm in, right? And so therefore, I've got this mission statement that I can call up in a heartbeat. I'm an angel. And then why? To live and give life in all its fullness. That's what I'm trying to do. I love that. I, um, this, the number of, the signifying number of the angel, uh, we all know the devil 666, the number of an angel is one, one, one. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, which is my birthday, January 11th. And my name actually means, David means beloved. Meltzer means waiter or servant. So I was born on the day of the angel and a beloved servant, which falls in the context of those five things, which I believe in. Uh, and you absolutely are an angel. Now, there is also something that you go by, which is Gucci. Yes, and I, I asked you before, because I'm always curious, like, how, is it called a call name? Is that, is that what they... Call sign. Yeah, call, call sign, yeah. Everyone's seen Top Gun, so they should know yeah. call sign. Hey, I don't know if you know this. I did some of the original flying in the movie Top Gun. The Very, real that's awesome. Well, the guy who starred in Top Gun also starred in Jerry Maguire. See, we're, we're yeah. right there with each other. <laughs> now, now, just to be clear, uh, I was just in the right place at the right time. I was flying off the Carrier Enterprise, and that's when we filmed it. It's no big deal. Too. They were just doing the movie about Lee uh, Steinberg, which I was the CEO of uh, later on in life. Um, but so how do, number one, people come up with call signs, and why did they name you Gucci? Okay, so first off, you don't get to pick it. And if you like it, it doesn't stick. Okay. So, uh, you know, no fighter pilot wants to be called Gucci. Okay. You want Hitman, Viper, Iceman, Maverick, you know, you want something cool, right? Uh, yeah. But you know, that's not how it works. Okay. Uh, typically, uh, the reason you use call signs, by the way, let's get to the reason is when you're in combat area or combat, uh, you want to be able to, to tell somebody if they got a missile coming at them, you don't want to say normally a, a call sign of an airplane is, you know, B301 or something like that, or, or sharpshooter 502. You don't have time to say that. You want to get someone's attention. So if I'm flying with my buddy and I see a missile coming at him, I say, Thumper, break left. And, you know, Thumper gets his attention or her attention, right? Plus, uh, it's more importantly, it's camaraderie, man. When we're in the bar, you're just talking. And by the way, those bar scenes are true, okay? Uh, when you're in the bar, you're, you're just with your buddies and, and you're talking and joking around. It really gets bad. I got to tell you, Dave, sometimes you just call people by their call signs that when you're in a situation where there's a, an official introduction and you go to introduce somebody and you realize you don't even know their first name and you've been flying with them for a year, 
you know, because it's like, no, it's, it's not Ken, it's Thumper, right? Yeah. But anyhow, um, yeah, so for me, okay, Gucci, uh, you know, I was actually, we were in training, Fallon, Nevada. That's where Top Gun is now, by the way. And we're training before you go out there and flying two, three times a day. Everything's going pretty well. And the, uh, the instructors go, okay, time out. Let's go into Reno, right? Saturday night. And I'm thinking, okay, that's cool. So I show up in the BOQ, that's the bachelor officer's quarters. And I had on this black button down shirt, but here's what killed me. I had a thin black leather tie on. Oh, that wasn't, wasn't even cool in the 80s, right, Dave? I mean, <laughs> and, and my buddies are looking at me, and they're, you know, jeans and T-shirts. They go, what is that? That's Gucci. Well, it didn't help that I was living on a sailboat and driving an Alfa Romeo at the time, too. Oh, yeah, of course. Not a way, Foley. You're, you're an Italian-Irish boy. That's awesome. It uh, stuck, and I hated it. I, I, see, I, see, I showed you my Einstein. Can I see the helmet behind you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is my fighter pilot helmet. Oh, by the way, um, Fist of the Fleet. You remember uh, Top Gun on Maverick's tail, because that's where they, they put it, was this image, okay? is a Fist of the Fleet grabbing a lightning bolt. Now, here's the, here's the inside story. That's not an F-14 squadron. This is an F-18 squadron. But Holly, and he was flying an F-14 at the time. But Hollywood, they, they just liked the patch so much that they, they put it on there. But yeah, this is my fighter pilot helmet, and you can see there's the name, Gucci. That is so cool. Yeah. What's the green square on the very top for? You know, that's where you put your night vision goggles. And uh, nowadays, they, they've got better helmets. You know, I mean, the technology is incredible. But we used to have to strap stuff on. And, and um, it's pretty cool, though, when you're flying around with night vision goggles on. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's like pulling off a football helmet from the 80s compared to what they look like today. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hey, hold on. I got something there. So here's uh, you spent football helmet. So here is, um, now this is, I played for Navy, right? This isn't my, my helmet, but this is a few years ago for the Army-Navy game. You know, we always put a special, um, Under Armour does an amazing job. And uh, this is the one, that, it's the Blue Angels. They used the blue and gold, and there's my wow. jet. And uh, yeah, the, the team wore this, which was pretty cool. Did you, did you guys get to go out on the field during the game? Did they have the Blue Angels honored at the game? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, uh, I was on the field for that game with the, some of the current Blue Angels. And, uh, yeah, I got to go out for the, the coin toss and all that kind of stuff. But uh, What's better, being on the field or doing the flyover? Well, okay. Um, I'm a ball player, right? So I love being in the game. You know, this is about being in the game. I'd, I'd rather be on the field. Uh, when I played, uh, that was back in the uh, early 80s. You know, uh, I remember that, that well. But I got to tell you, when you get a chance to fly over uh, and you get to, you, you, you know what the crowd feels like, you know what it, it's, what's going on in those people's minds. And, and, um, and when you get to fly over and hit those afterburners and just, you know, you know, you're lighting up the, the sky. They can feel, I want I want to shake the stadium. You know, um, that's a pretty cool feeling too. I like to do both. That's amazing. La last question. I, you played college football. To me, I still can't compare the amount of lessons that I learned from playing college football. Uh, you talk about teamwork and what you do with the Blue Angels and camaraderie, the locker room, rules, pushing, consistent, persistent, pursuit of your potential. There's so many lessons that, you know, today I stand on stages unifying and empowering that, you know, I learned being an average Division three football player. And, you know, for you to live, you know, that camaraderie, what's the number one lesson that you took with you from your college playing days into that Blue Angels team? from the Navy team you were on? Yeah, well, number one, the word is teamwork. And, and we all say that all the time. But what it meant to me was I had to personally do my best job I could. I had to be prepared. I had to be focused. But I had to trust. I had to trust my teammates. And so when I think about football, all the game planning we went through, the preparation, understanding your opponent, but also getting yourself to that state of, of mental focus. Uh, that's what, believe it or not, Dave, when you go to Blue Angels, it's like that times 10, okay? I mean, it's, it, it takes it to a whole new realm. The concepts are the same, and it's the same thing in business. You know, I'm out there like you, you know, taking the high performance teams and, and making, you know, allowing people to understand what it feels like, but more importantly, how to relate it back to their life, right? That's the key, right? And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's um, same concepts. Uh, but, you know, we have to be able to relate those back in, in, a, in a high performance way. Yeah, it's extraordinary. I love the blend of the pragmatic world to this idea of faith. 
And you talked about trust and faith, which are equivalent of one another. You know, we have faith in our teammates. We have faith in oneness, you know, this blend. The irony of my life always is, is when I have the closest I can to true faith, everything, faith, everything always turns out better. But yet, I, even though I know that consciously, I still get in on my own way and try to control yep. things. And I, I am insecure about trust and faith. But I think that's something I took away today is that, you know, those lessons of faith keep on coming and that we keep practicing faith as much as we practice ending fear. We have to practice faith. And I am so glad that you are here. I'm glad to be here myself. I'm a man of gratitude and of faith. And I have more faith that you and I now can empower over 2 million people to be happy together. And I look forward to doing this again. Fearless Success is the book that he wrote. John Foley is his name. You can call him the Gucci if you want. He is what I call the Menchie, uh, which in my culture, a Mensch is somebody that has given their life to others. And I appreciate you doing that, John. I look forward to doing tremendous things with you. Thanks for joining me. John Foley with Dave Meltzer, Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.